I'm happy to present to you our studies on effectiveness of combination therapy with liposome amphotericin B and miltefosin for visceral leishmaniasis in HIV co-infection. The DNDI MSF strategy for policy change in East Africa. This presentation will be structured as follows. I'll start with an overview of visceral leishmaniasis, then the methods, results, discussions, conclusions, recommendations, and lastly, acknowledgments. <coughs> visceral leishmaniasis, VL, or Kalaza, is a parasitic disease which is often fatal if untreated. <coughs> Ethiopia is one of the top six countries with high burden of VL. 3,400 to 5,000 VL cases occur every year. In Northwest Ethiopia, where this picture is taken, 20% of VL patients are also HIV co-infected. This is the highest co-infection rate in the world. Migrant workers are the most at risk. And before MSF intervened in this area, the majority of the patients died. In VL and HIV co-infection, HIV increases VL severity and worsens VL treatment outcomes. High case fatality, high initial parasitological failure rates, and high relapse rates have been reported. What does initial parasitological failure rates mean? <clears throat> this means that when a patient receives the first initial treatment for VL, at the end of treatment, we still find parasites in tissue. And that means the patient will still have to receive a more treatment, meaning the patient may stay up to two months or even longer in hospital. VL, in turn, promotes the progression of HIV infection. <coughs> Initial treatment outcomes in VLHIV is associated with high initial parasitological failure with all the available VL drugs. For instance, pentavalent antimonials, they have been shown to cause severe, uh, to cause fatal adverse events resulting in high case fatality rates of up to 33%. Miltefosin, result in high initial parasitological failures of up to 18%. Liposomal amphotericin B, or ambison, results in initial parasitological failure rates of up to 33%. Because combination therapy may improve treatment efficacy, in 2011, MSF introduced combination treatment with ambisome infusion at 30 milligrams total dose and miltofosib orally for 28 days at 100 milligrams per day. Has first line treatment for VL and in HIV co-infected patients in its treatment center in Abdurafi Health Center in Northwest Ethiopia. A retrospective cohort study in Abdurafi Health Center was followed by an open label randomized clinical trial in Abdurafi and Gonda Hospital in Northwest Ethiopia. In the trial, the WHO protocol of ambison monotherapy at 40 milligrams total dose was compared with the MSF protocol of, M of ambison and <coughs> miltefosin. We aimed 
to determine the effectiveness of this combination regimen. For the, for the retrospective cohort study, ethical approval was obtained from the relevant ethical bodies. We included all adult co-infected patients who were treated between January 2011 and August 2014 with an initial treatment of ambizom and miltiforcin. And uh, we excluded patients who, were, who discontinued treatment, defaulted, transferred out, or had missing treatment outcome. Proportions of initial treatment outcome categories were calculated. We determined predictors of initial parasitological failure and death using multivariable logistic regression. Because of missing CD4 counts, we created a composite marker of advanced HIV defined as WHO stage four, or CD4 less than 50 cells per microliter. We also did a sensitivity analysis. Of the 173 patients included in the cohort study, the majority were male, they were young, residents, had advanced HIV, and most of them were on antiretroviral treatment before the VR episode. Initial treatment outcomes in the cohort study were as presented. Cure was 83.8%, death 12.7%, and parasitological failure was 3.5%. We found that tuberculosis at VL diagnosis was predictive of parasitological failure. Age greater than 40, hemoglobin less than 6.5, primary VL which means no prior history of treatment of VL, we are predictive of death. In comparison with the previous cohort study that was done in the same population by Ritme, I think most, may, most of you probably know him. Uh, <laughs> The, these results compared to our initial treatment outcomes were as presented here. We see that with combination treatment, the results are significantly better. 3.5% parasitological value versus 32.8%. QR rates of 83.8 versus 60.4. And the death rates were non-significantly higher. These death rates are not related to the combination treatment. We believe that it was probable, probably because of the high admission of late stage VL patients during the study period. In the randomized control trial that followed the cohort study, 39 patients were randomized to ambizom and multiforcin, and 20 to ambizom. The cure rates were significantly better. The cure rates were better with the combination treatment. On day 29, the end of the initial treatment, we see it's 67 versus 49.8. On day 58, end of extended treatment for patients with parasitological failure, we see that the treatment is 91% with combination treatment versus 59% with ambulance. There were some li limitations in the cohort study. First, as a retrospective study, we could only study the predictors that were collected. Diagnosis and cure were not systematically confirmed by parasitological tests. And there were many missing CD4 counts. We also did not do long-term follow-up of patients, and neither did we have capacity to perform autopsies. In conclusion, we found par parasitological rates with combination therapy were low. We also determined predictors of poor outcome, predictors of death, and predictors of parasitological failure. Knowledge of these predictors 
may facilitate better management. The WHO, MSF, DNDI, and the Ethiopian Ministry of Health have agreed to implement compassionate use of combination therapy based on the results of these studies. It's also been uh, recommended to do a meta-analysis of the two studies. And lastly, once both studies are published, WHO will launch a consultative <coughs> meeting to eventually endorse the change in VLHIV case management. I would like to thank several people from MSF, from the DNDI, from the Institute of Tropical Medicine, Antwerp, the University of Gonda, Ethiopia, WHO, and the Ethiopian Ministry of Health. This work has also been supported by the Africa Project. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>